Hello and welcome to the 28th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name's Lib. And I am a pad so with a vendetta. And today we're, we're actually pulling from one of our recommendations that we have the form for. You know, the one we advertise at the end of every episode. We're actually doing it now. We're doing it. It's happening. It only took almost 30 episodes. Yeah, like, we, we established a, like, recommendation thing, like... I want to say six episodes in. I can't really remember. This was the first recommendation that we got, and we're yep. we're doing it now. Episode almost thirty. <laughs> it, it's it's funny because uh, story time for for the listeners, but um, technically this is a paid <laughs> a paid oh, yeah. recommendation because <laughs> uh, our our lovely friend Nat K one K one zero K on Twitch um, recommended this movie. And she gave me a, a, a coupon for a free Cineplex um, rental. And she was like, use this and watch Beef for Vendetta and then review it on the podcast. And then I didn't use it. <laughs> and yeah. then we didn't review Beef for Vendetta. <laughs> 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 we, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. So, Natasha, if you're listening, thanks for the recommendation. Because this week we watched V for Vendetta. And if you want to be featured... Uh, on our recommendations, go ahead and click on the link tree and recommend us a movie because we're actually going to start doing that. Like, this is the first of many. Yep, we, we have a couple in the old schedule. Yeah. If you want to figure out what's next, sh- so do I. Yeah, actually, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember either. But the, let's... <laughs> 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 I just got home from work. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's start with V for Vendetta. This is a a DC movie, very like obscure DC comic that was made into a movie. This is a DC graphic novel in the same vein as um, Watchmen. I think Watchmen is more popular. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, no, that's not a DC. I was going to say it's like Scott Pilgrim. That's not DC. That's not DC. It's a graphic novel like Scott Pilgrim. It's a DC comic in, in like name only. Yeah. Like DC published it. It isn't connected to the wider DC universe, at least not like the the Justice League universe, I, as far as I'm aware, because they recently made Watchmen canon, so I don't know where this lies, right? Wait, what, what, um, this is not about, like, superheroes. Yeah, like, this is just DC published this graphic novel, so it's DC in name, but yeah. Yeah, and the, the movie is way better than the fucking graphic novel, apparently. The movie is really good. I have one... One thing I think the book does better, but otherwise I think the movie is is <laughs> fantastic in basically every other way. The 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 thing of the book does better is it doesn't have Natalie Portman. <laughs> yeah, like I have two things the book does better. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk cinema. So, Beaver Vendetta, two thousand and five. I thought this was that that's pretty old. Honestly, I was surprised. The movie was directed by James McTeague. I I don't know this guy. The only other movie I've seen that this guy has done is uh, is The Raven. I hear it's a goth favorite. <laughs> I hear it's a favorite among certain people. <laughs> uh, I, the Raven, the Raven's like pretty meh. I, I, I wasn't too into it, but yeah, um, this is certainly better. This is better, much better. Yeah, well, uh, other other movies directed by him. He directed Ninja Assassin, <laughs> whatever that is, uh, and Breaking In and Survivor. No, not the Survivor Youth, not the show. This is a a Pierce Brosnan movie that sucks. Yeah, based on this dude's like letterbox scores, *Be for Vendetta* is his best movie by a landslide. Yeah, by a huge landslide. Uh, so let's read up. Let's read this uh, plot synopsis. Wait, okay, before we do that, what what did you rate the movie, Lou? Oh, I gave I gave it five out of five. Nice. I gave it uh four out of five. But it flops for me between a four and a four and a half because of the one thing I think the book does better. But I generally, I think this is really, really good. And if you haven't seen it, you should totally go out there and watch it. It has a niche cult following for a reason. And I'm, I'm definitely okay with being part of that. Yeah, and, the, and there's definitely something you will visually recognize from this movie. And that, of course, is the mask. Yep. Everybody and their mother knows about the anonymous hacking group. That use these masks from the... For, I don't know if it's from this movie or from the comic. I don't know if that's where it originated. It might be. It might It might have originated from the comic. You know, probably did. It probably did. Uh, probably probably from the comic, but... Um, 
Um, this mask is also just really popular as a Halloween thing. Like, yeah. I see this a lot. I see this a lot. Like, not just on the internet. Growing up, this mask I saw everywhere. And then, and then like, it's always, a, oh, Anonymous. Uh, anonymous hacked Sony. Remember that? <laughs> Remember when Anonymous hacked Sony in like 2012? I want to say like that. Yeah. Fun fact: I had a PS3 at the time, and I got I got so angry I couldn't play Call of Duty: Modern Warfare 2 that I sold my PS3 and got a 360 instead. Is that, that I kept what? for like a month, and then I got a, I rebought a PS3. This is a true story. Are you fucking so you you sold your PS3 just because you couldn't log in? Yeah, but it was you couldn't. It was only for like two days. No, no, no! This this was a much like wider hack. This is this is like I was down for like a couple of weeks. It did it didn't uh, affect me because I only played single player games on my PS3. <laughs> uh, it, it it didn't affect me much either. I just I don't know why I reacted that way. <laughs> All right. uh, I, I think I think if I could go back to to see myself as a twelve year old, I would I would say a lot of things to him. That's so fucking funny. Uh, this. <laughs> I want my I want my GameCube games back, kid. Why did you get rid of them? <laughs> I want I want to I, I I want to go back to my kid self and tell myself to not throw my my DS down the balcony <laughs> because I did that. Kids do and say the darndest things. Uh, but uh, this movie isn't about kids at all. There's like no children <laughs> in this movie at all. No, there are, and it and she dies. There's a single kid and she dies. Remember, she gets shot. Um, right, right, right. She gets <laughs> she gets Maria'd. She gets. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, now that I know this watch, joke, go watch the Sonic episode for more elaboration. Go, go, ba that. go back and watch the last episode on Sonic Two. No, the last episode was not Sonic Two. Oh, is it? Yes, it was. Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, the last episode was uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. We we I watched both those movies on the same week, so they they kind of blurred together. They're basically <laughs> the same movie, right? Like, like Sonic, <laughs> like if you if you replace the main character from V for Vendetta or every Everything Everywhere All at Once with Sonic, uh, it's the same movie, like more or less, right? Is, um, like imagine imagine like V. But he's he's Sonic. But he's Sonic. It's no. the same movie. No, that's not the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sonic imagine, overthrows like, the government. <laughs> like like v, v like torturing like Evie. S for Sonic. But it's Sonic. But it's Sonic. <laughs> this is this is the plot synopsis from Letterboxd. V for Vendetta this is a long tagline. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna get pretty political in this episode. Okay, anonymous. <laughs> in a world in which Great Britain has become a fascist state, it actually started with in a world. <laughs> in a world. In a where... world where Great Britain has become a fascist state. A mass vigilante, only known as V, conducts guerrilla warfare against the oppressive British government. When V rescues a young woman from the secret police... He find th th we're gonna explain that. <laughs> he finds her. He finds in her an ally, and with whom she he can continue his fight to free the people of Britain. You know, reading that, reading this description, like it, it sounds like a DC comic. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like one of those one of those movies that like fucking conspiracy theorists make that are like this is what the future is gonna be like if we don't overthrow yeah. our government <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and like v, v is clearly supposed to be like a Batman-esque character <laughs> yeah except he does much worse shit than Batman would ever do but but like that's that's a separate conversation well, v tries not to kill people <laughs> yeah. not very successful and, and, and that successfully and I, that's like one thing I, I want to I want to like make a statement about comparing this movie to the graphic novel. It's like in in the graphic novel, V is a lot more like morally ambiguous. Like like the actions he does are the same for the most part, but the way he acts and the way he likes like as like, he speaks and like his dialogue and, and and his interactions with the other characters, he's a lot more like morally gray. Where like you you never really know if you should be rooting for him or not, or if he's actually the quote unquote hero. Uh, whereas in this movie, it's a lot more um, black or white with its like political statement. Yeah, it's a political movie. Okay, let's throw that out there. It is a very political movie, but like th this movie like paints the government as evil. 
and and V and all his actions as like objectively good. And I don't think that's how it was supposed to be interpreted. Like like V V is trying to do the right thing kind of in the comic, but he his actions are a lot more like or like bad. Bad. <laughs> like they're not he's not he's not a he's not a good guy. He's not a hero. And like he's not portrayed as a hero here, but he's definitely portrayed as more of a like I'm right. This is this is the right course of action. This is kind of like the opposite of the Dune episode because he read the book this time. <laughs> well, I, I I I I read this in like Watchmen as like a kid because I was I was an edgy teenager. Oh boy, what's a kid? What's like, a kid gonna do with the knowledge you read from V for Vendetta? Nothing. I didn't even understand it until I got older and I read Reddit posts about it. But like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm angsty. I, I can't read Spider Man and anymore. I have to read comic books for adults. Oh, I read I read Watchmen. Punch the blood. <laughs> As if Watchmen isn't like childish fucking slop. <laughs> but anyway, Suicide Squad. We're, we're not talking. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like it's it, me, me reading Watchmen and V for and Vendetta as a kid and trying to get something out of it is like me, like a child watching Suicide Squad, like the original Suicide Squad. <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, this is a hero for real men. This is a superhero movie for adults. Yeah, dude, I have such a. Oh my god, when I, when I started high school. Uh, there, there was this, there's, there's, I don't know why I'm telling this story, but <laughs> the, it was around the time Suicide Squad came out, and you, you know how like the the couple costume of that year was Joker and uh, and Harley Quinn. It was so stupid, by the way. Like you guys, like, you guys are missing the fucking point yeah, you, on that one. You don't, you don't <laughs> know how they're really. I mean, like the in the original movie, they portray it completely wrong. And like in the end, she like gets back with him, right? But like, uh, fuck. Well, it's it's not that they portray it wrong; it's that they portray it the way a groomed like like Harley Quinn viewed their relationship. Yeah, but it's like like she she saw it as like this happy go lucky, all he loves me relationship. He just he just beats me because he loves me abusive relationship, right? And I guess that's, like, all the people doing couple cosplays didn't, like, finish the movie, where, like, we yeah. clearly see that Joker's a fucking, like, prick and, and, like, is super abusive. And also, just on top of everything, he's the fucking Joker. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, full stop, forget, like, the fact of, oh, maybe he's a nice guy. Like, no, he's the fucking Joker, guys. Like, come on. And and then, <laughs> so, the, the reason why I'm telling this story is because th there's this couple that throughout... My entire high school years from start to finish, they were together. And I think they're still together today. God bless them, man. That's fucking... That's it's insane. But every single Halloween, and I mean every single Halloween, they both had the exact same costume. He would be Jerry Little Joker, and she would be Harley Quinn. <laughs> you know, I don't want to comment on the, the state of a relationship I don't know the people involved in. But I, I think they missed the point of that movie, or they didn't watch it. I don't think they watched it. I just don't think they watched it at all. It's, that's very possible. <laughs> you, you think you think people did like A V and V? Please. <laughs> you <laughs> think that was a v? thing? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But what you think? Think like every Halloween, a girl should shave her head <laughs> or wear a bald cap. I think wearing a bald cap is more likely, but. <laughs> And then the other guy would fucking dress like Zoro, but put an anonymous mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, they would be missing the point of their dynamic completely because he fucking like tortures her in this story. But anyway, this movie, so it, it takes place in a in this universe where like the, the United States is like destroyed, pretty much. Uh, and like the the only like big main major city that speaks English, I would assume is uh is britain and so the government was like let's fucking enslave everybody to make sure everybody's alive but of course that gave all power to government and then that's where the the message of the movie comes in that we're not gonna go over a lot of because it's a, we're gonna start sounding like conspiracy theorists this is in the movie we don't believe these yeah. things <laughs> yeah we are not gonna be giving our opinion on the things that happen in this movie or if or like the real life equivalent of these events we're just gonna be talking about them as they are presented in the movie. It's a DC comic. Don't take it seriously. <laughs> as much as I would love to, uh, Batman is not real either. 
And if Batman was real, he would be uh, arrested or dead. Speaking of Batman, I've I've seen a bunch of articles compare this to the Batman and saying that the Batman is this generation's version of V for Vendetta. And I think again, going back to what we were saying about people not watching, did they not watch V for Vendetta? Did they not watch the Batman? Did they not watch the Batman? Yeah, like, the Batman the, the, has nothing to do with the government. <laughs> yeah, this isn't. I like it's like it's like they they saw the word vigilante and then they stopped there. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like I get like like yeah I guess like Batman's a vigilante <laughs> and V is a vigilante. They both wear masks. They're the same person, right? Batman is V. Speaking of who is V, we don't know. It's never revealed, and that that's that's one of my favorite things about this movie. It's it's implied that somebody in this movie is V, but you'll we'll never know. I've seen theories that it's the uh, one of the cops that only gets like three lines. We're never gonna know. And um, it, what I like about it though is it doesn't it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, that, it could be anybody. That's the whole point, right? It could be anybody. Like that's the the whole uh, climax is based on that. Anyone can wear the mask. There's your Spider-Man reference for today. Oh wow! I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's, it's like it's like like v's whole shtick is he's trying to like start a revolution right so like who he is doesn't matter because he could be anybody you should still be doing the same right like that, that's his whole stance and i, I think it, it would have led to like a kind of cop-out ending where like he takes off the mask and oh it's big reveal because like it doesn't it, it ultimately doesn't matter now, unlike a character like batman who again i don't know why these people are being fucking compared like, Batman's identity d- does matter. It's very important to his, his story, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, like, like, you can't replace Batman with, like, a random Joe and get the same kind of investment or the same kind of story arc out of it because, who like, Batman's identity is super important. The V's isn't. The v, v, is, v is an idea. Like the Joker. <laughs> v, v, is, v is an idea. An idea manifested, right? V V wants to create a society in that which we live in. <laughs> v V's um V is in this movie. He slowly kills all the the people in power. The government in this movie, the government's portrayed like a like how, what's the best way to describe like the emperor in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, the, the government is portrayed as like almost cartoonishly evil yeah this like evil council of super bad guys <laughs> yeah which again like the book is a little softer on like it's it's not presented like the government is evil and v is good they're both kind of gray and i think that's something the movie fails on like establishing well but otherwise it's like it's great but yeah the, the government here is portrayed as like super villains super villains yeah and and they're, and like there's the one main guy, uh, what's his name? I'm trying to find a oh, Creedy, right? It's Creedy. Yeah, that's it. This, this is the main guy, Creedy, and the little editor's note. I said the main bad guy was Creedy. That's not his name. It's Sutler, played by John Hurt, a fantastic performance. I think I correct myself later in the episode, but I'm gonna keep calling him Creedy until I realize that I'm wrong and correct myself. But whenever I say Creedy and I talk about the Supreme Chancellor or anything, I'm actually talking about Sutler, not Creedy. I was just being a dum dum. All right, back to the episode. What do they call him, Supreme Chancellor? <laughs> it's like, like the government is like like World War Two Germany. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that I think that's what it's supposed to be like a model of. Yeah, it's it's probably supposed to be, but like, I don't know if it like like that wasn't the intent of the story, right? That wasn't the intent of the original. I think the I think the the movie might be trying to tell a different kind of story, but like this yeah, same maybe. story, but like maybe, maybe they thought audiences were too like dumb. <laughs> maybe not dumb, but like they didn't want to portray a, a they didn't want to portray this kind of story as any other way because they don't want to like mold their mindset about real world events right especially like america right like america has a very like america has their version of what happened during x o y event and then there's like the other the opposing side has their version and then there's like what actually happened somewhere in the middle is what actually happened and i feel like the book is what actually happened and the movie is the government telling its version of what happened if that makes sense yeah yeah that makes sense i get that yeah, the, the original story is supposed to be somewhere in the middle, 
whereas the movie picks a side. Which isn't a bad thing, and I, I guess they did it because it's a movie and you have to, like, give a decisive answer, I guess, right? Yeah, you don't really see a lot of movies doing the whole uh, in-the-middle thing. Yeah, like, open-ended, like, yeah. this whole movie is up to your interpretation, I mean, right? I, re I really hope... I can't believe I'm bringing this up. I really hope the second Dune movie does that cuz the the book uh the book series has a lot of that. Actually I actually uh uh, uh update on uh Dune. I started reading the second book. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really good. <laughs> I haven't read the first book in like I read the first book years ago and I'm finally starting to read the second book. You're going to you're going to be excited for that Dune Dune 2. I I really hope they make movies for all the books, man. Oh, yeah, Dune Two is is Dune, Dune Two is still, still the first book, book. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I, I was talking about that with my friend. I was like, if they do the rest of the books, they have to do one movie per book at this point. Because if they if they keep making them two parts, it's gonna be twelve movies. <laughs> hey, listen, Dune Dune got nominated for a bunch of shit. Maybe maybe investors are into that, right? We're gonna be at the year uh, the year twenty ninety. Before the last Dune movie comes out. <laughs> no, the last Dune movie will be on the year Dune would be happening for real. <laughs> the year 10,000. <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Is we're going to keep making Dune movies until Dune really happens. And then we're going to retell the original stories as based on a true story. See, I, Hollywood, hire me. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be around. I'll be here in 8,000 years, bro. Just call me. <laughs> And when they ha when they do, I'll wear an anonymous mask and I'll, I'll be like, "Rise up against our oppressors! <laughs> Rise up against the Harkonnen <laughs> and the God oh, Emperors!" Friend. Oh wait, that's a spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the whole franchise is ruined. I just spoiled the whole fucking front. No, that's not. I'm gonna be real. I don't even. I, I, what you just said didn't even register in my brain. So I, I, it's not even a spoiler. Like, one of care. my one of my favorite little details that's in the first Dune movie. I can't talk about because it's such a big spoiler. But I like in the I, movie. In yeah, in the first Dune movie, it's a it's a no, huge foreshadow for the rest of the series, especially the the fourth book. Did we talk about it in our episode. No, we didn't. I, I didn't want to spoil it. I didn't even mention it. Oh, okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll elaborate more, or maybe. It, 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 it relates to the God Emperor. <laughs> In 2023 is when Dune Part 2 is supposed to come out, right? Yes, yeah. Um, whenever whenever that episode of the podcast comes out, we'll elaborate further. Oh, I don't, I don't know if they're going to show it. In, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I just okay. need, I need a cast list. That's what I need. I need a cast list for the second movie. Okay. Uh, But anyways... Uh, let's let's start talking about the cast because the, the all all the performances except one in this movie are like phenomenal. <laughs> yep. Uh, Hugo Weaving is V. Oh, there you go. We know we know we know V's identity. It's it's Hugo Weaving it's for Hugo real. Weaving. It's actually him. It's it's a uh, agent. Uh, oh, what's his in the Matrix? <laughs> agent Smith. Like like in general, he's a great actor, but in this movie, he's amazing. He speaks so fluently. And like professional, it feels like half of these lines were like ripped out of a poem, you know. Almost like words are supposed to flow elegantly to enter the mind of the mass population and manipulate them into doing something. Ooh, I wonder. <laughs> I, I wonder if that's what they were going for. And maybe manipulate wasn't the right word, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. No, I mean, conspiracy theorists would use the word manipulate. <laughs> v would use inspire, but you know. Yeah, he would use Inspire, but he is a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> True. So, v, V's character, he's kind of Zorro. Like, like he, he's, I mean, like, in the way he acts. Like, his favorite movie is a, like, 1920s action film. And, like, he quotes it all the time. He, he is, like, a, a Zorro. I was gonna say Robin Hood, but that's not exactly true either. He's more, he's more of a... Just like well, he dresses like Zoro. Yeah, he's an outlaw type. Yeah, he's a vigilante, if you will. <laughs> he's Batman. All I'm is ba Batman's origin includes the mask of Zoro. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god. So like the the movie the movie Batman went to go see with his parents or the the play they went to go see was the mask of Zoro. Um, and yeah. then his parents got shot in the alley. <laughs> 
V, v probably went to watch it and was like, I want to do that. <laughs> uh, v, v watched Thomas and Martha Wayne get shot and did nothing and then decided that he couldn't live with himself unless he started taking a stand against the government that, that killed Thomas and Martha. So th this movie takes place in the uh, far, far future of 2015, where uh, ba basically, like, everybody is locked in their houses after a certain time, and if you're caught outside, you, like, go to jail or something. But if, if you, if somebody catches you, like, speaking ill of the government, they'll lock you away forever, and you'll never see, they'll, they'll probably kill you. They don't tell you what happens, but most likely... You just, they kill you. Because the government is uh, trying to keep, quote-unquote, keep the peace. But it's, what, what, what's more happening is population control. <laughs> yeah. Again, like, depending on who you ask, maybe it's maintaining the peace, maybe it's population control. And V is trying to, this is, just, this is the part I'm vague about, like, this is a story of, like, in, like, the 1600s of this guy... Where on the 5th of November, he, like, overthrew the government or something. And, like, like, and then everyone prospered. And that was... Bleh. I don't remember that part of the movie. But V is trying to do that again in this modern age. And try to free Britain and give the city back to the people, really. To do that, he slowly murders every member of the supreme government. And, then like, makes big scenes out of them to make it known to the public and he tries to he, he like he goes on tv and uh spits out what's really propaganda <laughs> and... yeah because like, when you think about it right what v's doing is like essentially no different than what the government is doing it's just on the opposing side of that argument really yeah because like like the government is killing people who who oppose them and or like speak ill against them or whatever, but like these just doing the same. And they're killing people who speak against or are fighting against the people. Like it's the same. It's the same concept. It's just two opposing sides. And again, I'm not gonna keep bringing this up because I've said this are too much already. <laughs> but the bu the book is a little more like me like messy between them. Like like it's a little more um, vague. And how Natalie Portman is thrown into all of this randomly. <laughs> Because she's just, like, sneaking out of her house to go see somebody, and then, like, she finds V, and, and then they fall in love, basically. Because uh, she, I guess, has Stockholm Syndrome. Because <laughs> he straight up torches her. Yep. Like, he, he locks her up and makes her think she's going to die. The, the way she's introduced, too, is different in the book. Um, she's not, like, a prostitute in the book. Or would-be prostitute. She's a a a uh, a victim of of assault in in the book. Yeah, in the in the movie, she's just kind of there. That's how she's introduced. They're, they're essentially introduced as like this is a crime that's happening from someone in power against a a civilian. Therefore, V gets involved, right? Um, but but like in in the movie, she's a a prostitute or going to become a teenage prostitute. And V, like, defends her from, from uh, an assault. Whereas, in the book, she's just a civilian who is assaulted. Yeah. And really, like, she just... In this movie, she's basically just a, like, messenger, kind of. Like, uh, or, or, or an, uh, an accomplice, I should say. Like, the, he, she helps him overthrow the government. And then, eventually, uh, the entire city is on V's side. Which is probably the most unrealistic part of this movie. There's got to be some people that, you know, and like uh, e even even in like an oppressed society like that, there's got to be like two or three hundred people that like don't want to be involved, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. But but again, the the movie portrays him as right, therefore everybody rallies behind him. Yeah. So a everyone in the city is sent a mask and a Zoro costume. And they go and storm the government, and they blow up parliament, and they kill the uh, supreme uh, government. I have a weird, weird connection to make, but this is it's like, like contextually, very different. Remember, remember Coney twenty twelve. What? Do you remember Coney twenty twelve? I don't know what that is. It was like this this political movement to take down a Ugandan uh, 
leader. Like I thought you were going to compare it to the Area 51 raid a couple years ago. No, okay, well, okay, the Area 51 raid, I guess, is also true, but it's kind of funny. I guess that's comedic. This was, like, a thing that they did an actual, like, uh, m- militia. And, like, the, the guy who was, like, leading this, this organization, so there was an American dude, sent out a bunch of, like, a box for everyone who paid. They came with, like, a shirt that said Coney 2012... And like, uh, the, and you were supposed to go around the streets of wherever you were from and put like posters everywhere. Oh, <laughs> to stop what Cody. The fuck? And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, like it's just like V for Vendetta, guys. Dude. Oh wow, I I, I had no idea what. Do you sh- not remember this? Do you not remember Connie twenty twelve? I don't know what you, even your. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. They, they came to like our high school. The dude came and he gave like a speech. Well, I guess we went to high school at very different times. I guess, but you were alive in we 2012. Did... No, but but when you were in high school, I was in like third grade. Yeah, but like I'm sure you would have heard about it. Like it was a big thing. I I no, I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, well, it doesn't matter. It's anyway, it's like Beaver Vendetta. But, but I'm lo- wait, I'm be... looking it up right now. I'm looking at articles. This is this is fucking crazy. How is this, this not? Is how is this not taught in history classes? This is the kind of shit that should be because... taught. Be- I'll tell you why. It's because a lot of it was like like made up bullshit. But ah. anyway, like like Coney was real, but like a lot of what this guy was trying to do was greatly exaggerated. Oh, there's a movie and about also, it. And also, realistically, there wasn't much anybody could really do about it. And his plan kind of sucked. And he embezzled a bunch of money. It was a big thing. There's That's why I'm kind of surprised you hadn't heard about it because it kind of blew up as a meme. <laughs> like it, like this whole thing. But anyway, yeah, no, uh, I, that, I... That, that, that's enough Coney 2012 talk. I just, I thought it was funny that, like, you were <laughs> explaining V for Vendetta, and I got, like, a war flashback. Like, oh, yeah, like, like, Coney 2012. Damn. I, like, does that make you feel old, or, or does that, should I just feel stupid? <laughs> hey, you should feel stupid, not, 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 I feel old. I think you should feel stupid. <laughs> All right, back to, back to Natalie Portman. This is the only performance in the movie I don't like. She had to put on a um an accent, right? Like she she's not British, so she had to put on a British accent. I'm gonna be honest; it sounds very fake. I don't yeah, like. It, I don't it, like the. It doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound. Yeah. It doesn't sound natural. Yeah. It doesn't. It sounds like. It sounds like she could have used a bit more accent training for this movie. But you know, you know what? Like it, it works for what it is, right? It's just, it's just a movie. But still. Well, well my my take on that whole thing is like. If, if why not like because like i'm sure getting a british actor <laughs> would have been easy right like it, like yeah i'm sure i'm sure it would have been easy like uh, you could you could make the argument it was like oh but it's only it's 2005 it's 2005 and like natalie portman was a big name in 2005 not not to say she isn't still like like noteworthy actress but like 2005 was fresh off like star wars yeah well, that's that, that this movie came out right I think either right before or right after episode three. It was either right before or right after. I can't remember. Yeah, so like Natalie Portman was a a pretty big name at the time, so I got like that's why they went with her. But I feel like yeah, like instead of getting actors to do uh, accent training, why not just get native speakers <laughs> to do these movies? But I guess that's a different conversation. Hollywood's not ready to have. Yeah, but and, and you know you know what. The same thing could be said about today about American actors. If you're making an American movie, why are you casting British actors with American accents? Just cast an American actor. <laughs> it's always funny to me when I hear like like when I first heard Andrew Garfield or like Tom Holland's like normal speaking voice. I was I was caught off guard. I was like, wait, hold on, what? The fucking idea that the only only movie. That Andrew Garfield is in where he uses his normal speaking voice as Hacksaw Ridge. Like, what? <laughs> That's the only one? And he's in so many movies, especially these days. But he's always an American role. He's always an American. And, he, and the thing is, he does different American accents in all of them. It's not, it's not like he has one definitive American accent for movies. It's he does different ones. Yeah, whereas Tom Holland... He sounds exactly the same as, as Nathan Drake and as Peter Parker... But then if you watch, and then if you watch Devil all the time, that he's his performance is fucking beautiful in that movie. Yeah, because he's he's not speaking in a <laughs> language, he's not an accent, he's not like native speaking. In. I think he I think he shines in that movie. That movie is not great, but he definitely shines in it. Yeah, and I, I do love his performance as Peter Parker. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. And like that, that's also not to say that like like Andrew Garfield is insane. Like Andrew Garfield is insanely talented. 
for being able to do what he does. Yeah, no, I th- I think uh, I think his performance as Jonathan Larson was the the best performance of 2021 in my opinion. Like he he's super talented, but it's just it's kind of funny. Like like why, why not get any British people to be in these movies? Why are we still casting white people as Asian characters? Uh, but anyway, that's a that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, Natalie Portman's performance is one thing, but the character Evie. Let's talk about her for a bit because let's we talk about V. Let's talk about Evie. Uh, I'm sure she's way better in the comic. <laughs> she's, way, she's way better in the comic. <laughs> I'm sure she's a hundred times better in the comic. But she's basically the new V after the end of the movie because uh, spoilers, V dies. Oh, we didn't we didn't get into that whole thing about V kind of being immortal. <laughs> there, there's this great line where where, where V is like um like behind this behind this cloak. Uh, isn't isn't blood and flesh? Uh, I'm an idea, <laughs> which is kind of what I was joking about earlier. Because we're not gonna get into it because it's not actually super important to when talking about this film. But there was like this experiment with a like experimental drug, and the the only reason this drug was created was to scare the public, uh, because the drug just started killing people. The only survivor of this plague that started was v and it gave him like like super like he even like he could heal super fast and uh he's basically invincible like he's kind of like bulletproof but you know if shot enough times he will die like it, which is exactly what happens in this movie yeah because at the end of the day an, an idea is still spawned from a man and a man can die just as anyone else can we're getting we're getting deep directly from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I see through your lies, Pat. <laughs> that didn't come into that didn't come from your noggin. That came. That was, never, that, that was his last line. <laughs> I never claimed that it came from my noggin. <laughs> yeah, and, and like and like uh, uh, Evie kind of taking up the mantle at the end of the movie is, is supposed to like continue the the idea that like. V could be anybody, right? Yeah, because at the end of the movie, everyone's V. Even uh, one of the detectives that have been chasing Evie and V throughout the entire movie, even he uh, comes around to it afterwards. Yeah, because V V's uh, the hero. There's the hero a bit of V in everybody. The hero of Britain deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Also, you want to know why he chose the name V? It's not for the word vendetta. It's because he was patient number five <laughs> at the hospital when he when they gave him the drug. Cool, right? Uh, who else is in this movie? Uh, we have a uh, Stephen Fry as like the guy that that TV keeps seeing. Yeah, uh, D- D- Daytrich, Daltrich. I don't remember his name. Yeah, something like Gordon. His first name is Gordon. Uh, John Hurt is in this movie as well. Yeah, he's uh he's in. <laughs> He's in Space Balls. He's in like Hellboy. He's in Hellboy. He's in King of the Crystal Skull, everyone's favorite Indiana Jones movie. Uh, who does he play in this? He's one of the government people, isn't he? Yeah. Chancellor Adam Sutler, yeah. He's in Alien. He's <laughs> a Doctor Who, for all you Whovians out there. Uh, John Hurt's <laughs> great. John Hurt's really, really good actor. Yeah, he's the main bad guy. But Lib, this movie's not supposed to have a bad guy. Oh, you're right. Oh, fuck, I picked a side. <laughs> Damn it. He, he's the war doctor, so he makes me feel all warm and fuzzy like my grandpa. <laughs> I want to give John Hurt a hug. <laughs> I love him. He's great. He's John Merrick in The Elephant Man. You know, that movie that film teachers force you to watch. That's <laughs> that movie I, I've heard of and have not seen. Yeah, take a film class. You're for, you're, the teacher's going to force you to watch it. I took two film classes. They did not make me watch that. Did they make you watch Citizen Kane? They made me watch Citizen Kane. They yeah. made me watch... <laughs> No Country for Old Men, which became one of my favorite movies of all time. Good movie. Haven't seen it. They made me watch The Shining and then told me to write a paper on it as if I saw it for the first time. But I had been watching it like every year for my entire life up to that point because I love The Shining. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the rest of the cast is, is great. Like the, Every one of this movie is great. My only problem is really Natalie Portman. But her performance and her character, uh, Evie, on its own didn't ruined the movie for me i still gave it five stars in the end yeah like i think i think this like overall the the acting here is is great uh, and the, the music in this in this movie is great too this movie is really well shot as well like like i, I wish i could like talk about 
more specific things with this this movie on like a production standpoint is fantastic. Yeah, th- this the- this was a shot by the same guy who did The Princess Bride. Uh, and that movie shot really well too for being a parody film. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, Adrian Biddle. Uh, but he also did The Mummy and Alien. Okay. More fantastically shot movies. Yeah. Okay. More. Yeah. He's, he's he's a big name in in like late '90s, early 2000s movies. Uh, when movies were good, the '90s. Honestly, dude. <laughs> Honestly. I hope we hit another like renaissance of movies like one day it's not gonna happen yeah i, I don't think it's, i don't think it's gonna happen it's because you, you want to know why we're we're never gonna hit a renaissance of of good movies anymore the market is overly saturated with uh, superhero movies that's why it's never gonna happen again and the thing is that's what audiences want so like i i don't blame hollywood for releasing 10 superhero movies a year because that's what sells and i get into the day uh, Hollywood's a business and they have to make money. Like, so. ima- Imagine if superhero movies were out of the equation and then we just got a movie like Power of the Dog. People would die for that movie. But now, since be- because we have our modern worldview and now like, and then we watched Power of the Dog, we're like, this movie's kind of mid. Like, <laughs> well, that, 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 like, I saw a take on, on TikTok that really pissed me off because like, people were saying that, oh, like Marvel, sh- Marvel and Disney should make superhero mo- like make MCU movies about not superhero characters like how about they make a movie about um a a a religious person coming to terms with the fact that uh, norse mythology and gods are real and that his religion uh, isn't what he thought it was or like let's 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 make a movie about a family who like came back after the snap and like half like their children are five years older i'm like guys you're, you're you're describing other movies you're describing you want marvel to make movies that you're not watching right now yeah, that that's the thing, right? Like, the, the, those are good concepts. They could work if they were done well, but that's 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 like for a comic book or for a novel. That those were were good as novels these days. Like, uh, if V for Vendetta came out today, nobody would watch it. It it would just be it would just be viewed as a they like, people would people first of all people would cancel it right away. Yeah, nobody would watch it, or everyone would be like, "Oh, this is like Batman Light." Yeah. <laughs> It's too, it's too overly saturated with superhero movies that are exactly the same nowadays, and that that's why we're never gonna have a, a, a renaissance of film anymore. It's the same same thing with music. We're never gonna have a renaissance of music anymore because everything everything's rap now. It, it's it's a shame because like people are so close, right? To 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 like having a point or like. But the problem is they're asking for something that they have and they're just not watching. Like, if you want, like, character-driven movies, like, if you want character studies, they exist. So they're out there. You're just not watching them because you're going to watch Endgame again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a reason why, right now, what is considered to be the greatest film of all time is a fucking over, overly, overly uh, stupid multiverse movie. You think that would fly in the 90s? No. Oh, it's too weird. Nobody would watch that. They'd be like, what the fuck is this? I'd, I'd rather watch something serious. And the thing is, I, I don't see people... Like, I, I don't think every, everything everywhere all at once is going to do too well. Unless it gets nominated for, like, Best Picture or something. People aren't going to... Like, general audiences aren't going to watch it. Yeah, in our episode of Everywhere, Everything Everywhere All at Once, if, uh, go ahead and listen to it. It was the last episode. We make a lot of points on how this movie is one of the best produced movies we've ever seen and it should be nominated for a lot of categories and it probably will and but and that's the only recognition that movie's going to get did you know about coda before the oscars happened no would you have known about it if the the market wasn't overly saturated with all the movies that are exactly the same probably you would probably know about Coda, and people would probably be like, "Oh yeah, this is definitely gonna get an Oscar nomination." Because n- nowadays, how many times have you watched a movie and then be like, "Oh, this might get an Oscar"? You never do that anymore, right? Like it, it doesn't happen anymore. An alternative question is, how many times have you watched? Have you gone to the theater for something that wasn't a pop culture movie? Yeah, like like when me and Pat went to get went to watch uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. The film, the the theater was completely filled with people who genuinely adore film, the people who love movies, and like we, I was hearing conversations around us, like this, these are all people that were like 
that knew about this movie and came to watch it. Like, we made this point in the episode, but, like, who... If Coda just came out, right? And, and Coda didn't get a theatrical release over here where we live. But if it did, nobody would be like, let's go watch Coda tonight, you know? You would have to plan it out. Like, oh, I, there's this great movie I heard of called Coda. Let's go watch it. Yeah. And, 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 like, and that's not to say I don't like superhero movies. Because like, I love them. I watch most of them. Doctor Strange is coming out in like a couple days at the time of recording. Yeah, we're all going to watch it. We're, we're going to watch it together. We're all excited to see it. And we're going to be talking about it. That's like the next episode, I think. Spoilers. That is actually the next episode, yeah. Yeah, that's not to say we don't like superhero movies. But I think, I think the abundance of superhero movies or just pop culture action movies have like kind of just like taken us far off the path of this film renaissance we could have because people are 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 on the right track they want movies like they want to see the lives of like the people who survived the snap or the people who came back to find that their 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 family moved on without them right like people have this idea in their head that they they want to see these movies but the problem is they're looking at disney to do it when instead they're like they have to think that these movies already exist you're just not watching them. Yeah. And because you're not watching them, they're not being made. Then like more of them aren't being made. That that's why it's so important to like watch movies you've never heard of, watch movies that have bad reviews. Watch anything that piques your interest cuz you know you never know. It might be the next B for Vendetta. We, we found a way to wrap that back around because that was a bit of a tangent. We brought right back to B for Vendetta, yeah. That's, that might be the best tangent we've ever had. <laughs> well, it's something I'm really passionate about and I'd love to have like a... Maybe we could do that like on an episode one day. It's just like a chat, uh, just chatting. Because you know? it's, it's just an interesting topic. These days, with the, the technology we have, with the cameras and the, the talent that we have today with... These amazing actors and actresses and, and these amazing directors and producers and cinematographers and editors that we have these days. We have the potential to make a new renaissance. Just to, to restart the way we look at film. But Hollywood is too scared to do it. And I think they know they can do it. And there are some directors that push forward to try and do that. Like Christopher Nolan pushes forward to try and hit that standard i i don't think it's hollywood that's scared because like 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 you said there is there's directors that are that would love to just like take that next big step in film like tarantino or, or nolan or 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 wright or whoever spielberg but their problem is money right like hollywood is it thrives on their investors and what are investors gonna put their money into a an experimental like personal story or Iron Man 4, right? Like, what's gonna... At the end of the day, what's gonna bring them more money? And maybe Iron Man 4 is great, right? But, like, but like it comes at the cost of these smaller movies with bigger ideas not getting recognition they might deserve because 10 million people want to go see Iron Man 7. And then, and then like, when, like, Iron Man 10 comes out... Right and and like people watch it. What's their reaction immediately after? When's the next one? Yeah, like that's not that's not how you should look at film. As much as I love um, superhero movies, I don't think about them the same way I think about something like everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. Right? There there are like a few examples. Like I still have like Spider Man No Way Home brain rot. That's because I'm a Spider Man fanboy. But like I like I'm super excited for for. Doctor Strange because of Sam Raimi as a director. But I'm not going to be thinking about what happened in Doctor Strange in a month. I'll be thinking about what Sam Raimi did. But like as far as like the story and the characters, I'm not going to be thinking about that anymore in a month. We watched Black Widow a year ago. I don't remember it. I could I could not tell you what happened in that movie. I, I can't I can't tell you anything that happened in that except except for the the bad CG. Yeah. I I, I think about stuff like like Shang Chi because Shang Chi like. It's still a superhero movie, but it, it pushed the envelope, you know? Like, the, the, the fight choreography in Shang-Chi is the best out of any Marvel movie, bar none. And that's what I'm going to think about when I think about Shang-Chi. But, like, I'm not going to think about something like uh, like Black Widow or or what came out after Shang-Chi. There was a movie, wasn't there? But between that and There was Spider-Man? a movie after Shang-Chi. It was uh, oh, a... That... I, I, is that not the point? No Way or... Home. Is it No Way Home? I thought there was one between them. No Way Home's at... 
Oh, Eternals. Eternals. I don't even remember watching that movie. I know I did because I logged it, but I don't remember watching it. I, I think, like, I agree that I think more Marvel stuff needs to push the envelope. But I think the things people want Marvel to do is already out there. They just, they're not looking at it. And and maybe we should end that tangent here because we can go on. And this is not an episode about that. Yeah. This is about V for Vendetta. Yeah, the, 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 I just want to make one last point because, like, we're talking about this and all that. Why do you think people are still talking about movies like V for Vendetta, 12 exactly. Angry Men? Do you, do you think people are in like 20 years are going to be talking about the MCU as extensively as we're talking about the great movies of the past? I don't think so. Avengers Endgame is not going to be talked about because it was such an epic finale to the to the MCU. People are talking about it because they're going to be like, oh my god, sitting there in the theater watching that happen with all my friends was insane. Yeah, and, and like that's part of the experience too. Like, No Way Home was good. But I think No Way Home was made better because I watched it in the theaters with my friends and the whole audience was getting into it. And the same goes for for Endgame. Is I, like I don't even like Endgame, but because I got to see it in theaters and I got I got that experience, I enjoyed it more. But I, but that's not me enjoying Endgame as a film. That's me enjoying Endgame as an experience I got to experience with other people, which is fine. That's what movies are about, right? Movies are like. They are what you make of them to an extent, but I kind of miss movies coming out that you could talk about as a as an art piece. Yeah, the MCU is not you can't dissect the MCU the same way you dissect again a, a painting, right? Yeah, and that that's that's why when the Batman came out, me and Pat were fucking drooling at that movie after watching it. That shot so well. It's, 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 it's shot it's, like it's, a film. The Batman is a film. That is the art piece we have been looking for in these superhero movies. Like say say what you will about the Batman. Like like as like, like a lot of people think it's too slow, or like they're tired of of Bruce Wayne whispering the whole movie. Like whatever. That's 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 fine. You're allowed to feel that way. But I think the way Batman is shot and edited needs to be like the gold standard for, for superhero movies going forward. Because I think that the best part about the Batman is that if you take away the superhero stuff and and the and, and all all the things that like make it pop culture and cliche, behind all of that is a character study of Bruce Wayne. And that's what that's what we need. But okay, yeah, we, yeah we're, we'll stop there. We, uh... we got on for a while. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> TLDR, when, when Scorsese said that movie heroes are roller coaster rides, maybe he had a point. <laughs> yeah. All that all that's to say that V for Vendetta really did that for the early 2000s, and we're at, there probably won't be, ever be another movie like this. Probably not. I mean, th- like, Watchmen tried. <laughs> Watchmen tried. <laughs> the the thing that fucking ruined Watchmen, I think, is just because um, it was directed by a guy who doesn't like comic books. <laughs> I think it, it was directed by a guy who doesn't understand the comic book. No, no, he says he loves reading comics. Uh, I just think he's lying. Let's not let's not summon the Snyder cult. Mm. Well, with that being said, *Beef for Vendetta*, great movie. I highly recommend it. We're gonna move on to our next segment. Hot off the presses segment where we talk about movie news, and there's a a lot happened here. A lot happened because CinemaCon was this week. It ended uh, two days ago. Uh, we took a week off, so there was there was that. But yeah, CinemaCon did happen, and uh, there's a lot a lot to talk about there. So you want to just jump right into it? Yeah, let's let's jump right into it. So one of the first things that we got at CinemaCon was we have some news about. Every Spider-Man project, every DC project, they got delayed. All of them. Every single DC project got delayed. Every single Spider-Man project got delayed by about from six months to a year. It varied per movie. The the super sad thing is that Across the Spider-Verse was delayed from October 8th to April 13th, I want to say. It was a a pretty hefty delay. Yeah, that's, that's a chonker. I was actually getting, I was actually super excited. I was like, oh, it's coming out on my birthday month. (laughs) <laughs> on the opposite end um we did get a title confirmation for spider-verse part two it's no longer going to be called part one and part two now it has its own title it's called beyond the spider-verse and uh yeah it's supposed to come out in 2024 i believe 
with the delay for the DC movies, uh, Black Adam has been delayed to October 21st, which is my birthday. Black Adam is my birthday movie. <laughs> and I actually, I've done this research before because I was always super curious. And there has never been a big budget AAA movie that's come out on my birthday. Black Adam is the first one. Another editor's note, that statement was completely wrong. I just looked it up. And there's a bunch of movies that came out on my birthday. So we got Johnny English Reborn, the music video for Lips Are Moving. I don't know why that's here. Paranormal Activity 3, the Speed Racer movie, The Three Musketeers, and Moonlight. Moonlight came out on my birthday. I didn't know that. I just looked it up right now. Also, the number one movie that came out on my birthday is called Boo Ameda Halloween. I don't know what that is. Uh, we also have Rockabye, uh, Rebecca, and some other obscure ones I've never heard of. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought Black Adam would be the first big budget one, but there are, there are multiple big budget ones here. I mean, Moonlight is here, so yeah, yeah, I was just wrong. The Rock, baby. Yay, I guess. Uh, moving on, another thing that we got confirmed is uh, the Batman Two is officially happening and uh zoe kravitz was confirmed to be returning we kind of knew this already but now it's actually official yeah i don't think anyone is really surprised about the batman 2 happening but yeah that's the thing to go back to cinemacon for for a second because the batman yeah the batman 2 was confirmed at cinemacon um we also did get trailers at cinemacon as well as like uh Test footage? I'll, I'll call it test footage, but it's more like beta, beta footage. They showed uh, 15 minutes of Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, they showed 15 minutes of Across the Spider-Verse. They showed like 20 minutes of Multiverse of Madness. We got trailers for stuff like The Flash. We got footage from Shazam 2, uh, Aquaman 2, uh, Wonka, Samlet's Lot, Don't Don't Worry Darling, the new Olivia Wilde movie. Uh, the Elvis movie got footage shown at the uh, CinemaCon. Um, a lot of stuff was shown at CinemaCon. I hope we get to see this stuff at some point. Um, or at least the, the trailers, we get to see them. But uh, we do have descriptions of what happened in this event. We got confirmation for Spider-Verse, for example, that um, a Vulture is in it. Neat. And um, the version of Spider-Woman is the pregnant one from like the 2017 comics, I think. So that's that's cool. Cool. I don't know what that... I don't know what he's talking about, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... An obscure thing that got revealed is uh, J James Cameron still thinks Avatar is relevant. We know this. We got a trailer for Avatar 2. It is called Avatar The Way of Water. And apparently, from, uh, again, we, we haven't, the trailer's not public yet, but from descriptions, they said it looks breathtaking. I'll have to see for myself because Cyberpunk 2077 looked breathtaking. <laughs> Okay, you know, to be honest, that game looks gorgeous, but whatever. When it works. When it works. Oh, wait, what? I didn't know about this one. <laughs> Pat added a bunch of stuff to the list uh, last minute that I didn't see until right now. So, the Marvels and Ant-Man 3 swapped release dates. So, Ant-Man 3 is coming out first. I guess, I guess they're doing this because Miss um, Marvel is a show, and they're going to wait until people have time to watch that and then make Mi the Marvels come out. Yeah, because she's in it. Like, it's confirmed she's in it. We got like a poster. I mean, it's called the Marvels. Like, <laughs> I think I think from the title you would know, like, oh, there's Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel. There they are. And there's Monica Rambo. May or may not be a variant that we'll talk about soon. Hmm. We'll see you in Multiverse of Madness next week. So John Watts is was directing the MCU Fantastic Four movie. He has decided to walk from the project. It was completely amicable. John Watts has just decided that he wants to take a break from superhero movies. So he is no longer directing Fantastic Four. Uh, but he was also confirmed to be returning for Spider-Man 4. As well as, obviously, uh, Tom Holland is returning as Peter Parker. And Zendaya is, confirming, is confirmed to be returning as well. No confirmation for Ned Leeds yet. But if if them two are coming back, they're they're he's probably gonna come back. I, I hope if Zendaya returns, it is for a much smaller role because of the ending of Far From Home, from No Way Home. Yep. Of this, you know what? In that case, then Ned might not even be in the movie, unless he's Hobgoblin. Ooh. Ooh. Next up, we have a few uh, confirmations from the new Doctor Strange trailer. 
So Monica Rambo is uh, a character from the comics that not a lot of people know. I've never heard of her. Uh, she's in WandaVision and she's in Captain Marvel. She's the kid in Captain Marvel and she's the the agent in WandaVision. Yeah, who gets uh, who gets powers in WandaVision? Like her mom was the the pilot in Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah. In in the recent Doctor Strange trailer, we are we are, it was confirmed that the Captain Marvel that is part of the Illuminati is a variant of Monica Rambeau. Damn. It's a lot of words. Um, multiverse shenanigans. Yeah. Also, I'm a, I'm just throwing this in. Speaking of a uh, multiverse of madness. We got the we got this super super cool white poster for it. I don't know if I'm allowed to put it up, but it, like I'm not going to put it up on the YouTube channel just in case. But if you just search up Multiverse of Madness white poster, this is I think the best MCU poster we've got so far. Like that this it looks um oh no, no no never mind that's a lie it's the second best the best one's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it, it looks really good and you could see like in the glass there's like four different types of evens they look they, this movie looks like it's gonna be a fucking thrill ride it's also a very long long movie uh but moving on uh i think we're i think that we're done with all of the cinema con stuff i think that was all the cinema con stuff yeah we, we've been actually the 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 John Watts and Doctor Strange 2 stuff wasn't from CinemaCon. That was that was public. Like, okay. The trailer is there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, we were just talking about how uh, uh, the we're so oversaturated with superhero movies. All of that from CinemaCon. That was all superhero stuff, except, except Avatar Elvis. and Elvis. And Elvis. Jesus, man. <laughs> all right. So that '70s show is getting a reboot. If you remember, there was another reboot a long time ago. That '80s show, which flopped. But we're getting that 90s show, which is actually going to bring back some of the main cast. The main characters look like they're going to be Kit and Ready. <laughs> Kit and Ready. <laughs> Kit and Ready. Uh, for, off, cam for, for off, camera. off camera, I called them Kit and Ready. Red and Kitty. So it looks like they're going to be the main characters and uh, the original cast might be coming in for cameos and short, small roles. Every... Every cast member from that 70s show has been confirmed to return, except for Hyde. Who knows why? Next. Two CW shows have been cancelled. Legend of Tomorrow has been cancelled at season 7, I believe. And Batgirl has been cancelled at season 3. Damn. Uh, I'm not going to miss either. I could not get into Legend of Tomorrow personally. And Batgirl sucks. Batgirl sucks. Oh, Batwoman sucks. Batgirl is a different show. Well, then... then well, hold on a second now. <laughs> well, I hear I th th what's the new one called? Batgirl. No, but no, I mean, I mean the, the new CW show. Isn't there a new one? Superman and Lois. I heard Superman and Lois is good, but it's not tied to the CW at all. So that's probably why it's good. Ah, I thought that was a CW. Oh well, James Corden, uh, <laughs> from the hit film Cats, is leaving the Late Late Show in 2023. One of our friends told us this yesterday. I guess that's how it got in here. <laughs> uh, yes, that's why it's in here. You know what? Good riddance. I, I couldn't care less. He, he had a terrible talk show. I don't like talk shows. I don't like James Corden, so I did not watch the show. The only good talk show is Conan. <laughs> I'll take your word on it. Hey. Another, another uh, kind of sad one here. So Andrew Garfield is actually taking a break from acting. Not... Not just as American characters. <laughs> in acting in general. Acting in general. <laughs> he was in two bangers and decided, you know what, I'm taking a break. Good for him. I hope he gets his rest. That that seems to be uh, something that's happening a lot. A lot of people are taking breaks. <laughs> a lot of actors are taking breaks. But I, I can see why actors, are, it's very demanding to be an actor these days. You, you have to like give months of your life at a time to, to a project, right? Right. Next, we have... I put a bunch of Spider-Man stuff together. Well, it's been related things. Oh, boy. But Tobey Maguire was cast as Charlie Chaplin in Babylon. Yeah, we, we knew for a while that Tobey Maguire was in Babylon. But he's Charlie Chaplin. Yep. Is that the? Is he the lead? Is that him? I believe so. Ooh. Uh, Babylon is a movie that's coming out that's directed by Damien Chazelle, the guy who directed uh, Whiplash and La La Land. So you're damn right we're going to watch that. <laughs> And and Toby's in it, so I'm obligated to watch it. He's he Toby's a uh, Toby Maguire is that actually like if you guys actually didn't know this, he's not normally a film actor. He's he's broad he's a Broadway actor. 
I just checked. He is a supporting role, and he's also producing the movie. Our executive, executive producer. But yeah. Oh, like Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> so Sam Raimi has been doing a lot of interviews lately. Obviously, he's doing his press tour for Multiverse of Madness. He has confirmed that his favorite movie, his favorite character, sorry, is uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the MCU. His description tells me he did not watch Far From Home, so I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> He said that he would be interested in doing a Spider-Man 4 if Marvel was interested. Marvel, please. Please. I'm, not, I'm no longer asking. Please make Spider-Man 4. <laughs> make Spider-Man 4. Make Amazing Spider-Man 3. Yeah. <laughs> if they make Amazing Spider-Man 3 and it's just as bad as the first two, I'm gonna be so... Like, I'm gonna laugh so hard. I'm gonna be yeah. so fucking happy. That's such a huge meme. <laughs> But I, you could hope it, it doesn't, right? Uh, I kind of want it to. <laughs> no, no, no. Andrew Garfield deserves uh, his good Spidey movie. He does. All right, so before I mentioned that the the white Doctor Strange poster is the second best Marvel poster, uh, it's because since uh, the last time we recorded, the Thor Love and Thunder trailer finally dropped. It plays Sweet Child of Mine by uh, Guns N' Roses. That was kind of weird, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it. But anyways, the movie looks pretty good, but the poster looks better. <laughs> I, that poster is straight up a, a He-Man type kind of poster, and it looks amazing. That, and it, it, it looks hand-drawn, too. That, that is the best MCU poster we will ever get. The one with Thor, not the one with Mighty Thor. Fuck Natalie Portman. <laughs> I just dropped my phone. Good job. Oh, another CinemaCon thing, but uh, Fast and Furious 10 has this title. It's Fast X. Um, Brie Larson was also cast in this movie, and so was Jason Momoa. This is the one that's going to be in space, right? We made 11 of these fucking movies. 11. Oh, you're counting Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> uh, yep. This is... Uh... I'm tired. And that's someone that's coming from someone who kind of enjoys these movies as dumb action flicks. I'm tired of them. I haven't seen any of them, and I don't want to. <laughs> the early ones are fun. I think I think Fast Five is unironically like great. Well, that that concludes uh, Hot Off the Press. It's a very busy week, and next week we're gonna have nothing to talk about. <laughs> next week we're talking about nothing. We're not even talking about movies. It's gonna be an hour of me talking about Sam Raimi as a person, and that's it. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to our final segment for today, Backlogged, the segment where we recommend each other movies. Okay, so when we recorded the backlog segment, I got a case of the hiccups, and I couldn't stop them, and I couldn't get rid of them, and we didn't have time to re-record the segment because this episode was already as delayed as it is, so I just rolled with it, and it didn't come out well, and I didn't end up speaking my thoughts about X-Men, so I'm actually gonna do that right now super quickly. I thought it was alright for being a 2000s movie, like the first one after Blade and Batman and Robin was actually pretty good. It's a good start for what comes afterwards, and I'm really excited to watch Logan after this, because in this movie, Wolverine's not really a big important character. He's kind of just there for no reason. I, in my in my head, he was just, like, there to sell tickets for that movie because I've seen X2 at this point, and in X2, he's a much, like, more influential character, so I think they just didn't know what to do with Wolverine in the first movie, and we are going to be focusing on Wolverine mostly during this watch of the X-Men movies because I'm going to watch Logan, so I'm going to be focusing on that. But there you go. There's my... Thoughts on X-Men, I thought it was okay. If I watched it as a kid, I probably would have liked it. Mystique creeps me out. And after watching X2, she's climbing the ranks of hated movie characters. And I feel like she's going to meet Nebula up there, so we'll see. Anyways, please enjoy me trying to talk about X-Men and failing because my body hates me. Pat recommended me the very first X-Men because prior to the episode being recorded, we were talking about how I never saw Logan and that, that triggered him, I guess. Yeah, it pissed me off. 
Um, because at one, I really want him to watch Logan because I think he'd love Logan. I th- I think he I would love it. I also think I'd love Logan. I know I love Logan. Uh, but also for you guys, I want to talk about Logan, and we can't do that unless Lib watches ten movies. <laughs> so I figured instead of waiting for Lib to watch them, I'll force him to. So in, if in four weeks, because I already have an idea of what I'm recommending him next time. <laughs> so for four weeks, he doesn't. He has not seen X two. I will be recommending him X two. <laughs> Oh, fuck, I have hiccups. Why? Uh, yeah, so that's what's happening. Uh, you have been warned. The audience has been warned. We are watching Logan, whether you want to or not. You okay? <coughs> fuck. <laughs> I have hiccups, and it's me. And whenever I, I have to cough, and whenever I cough, I get a hiccup. <coughs> oh, fucking shit. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> All right, so yeah, th- this is all leading up to me watching Logan eventually. I need to watch even the bad ones. <laughs> Fuck, I still hiccup. Funny, it's not. It's funny because if anything, if anything, we're watching mostly the bad ones. Yeah, I have to watch the two Wolverine movies. Damn. Well, uh, I gave X Men three stars. I also gave it three stars. Yeah, it's uh, it was directed by Brian Singer. The guy who directed The Usual Suspects and Bohemian Rhapsody. It's it's it's, it's very hit or, hit or miss for that. Fucking hiccups. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is also a 90s superhero movie. 1999, 2000. Right? Like 2000, 2000, okay. Yeah, this was the first superhero movie to come out after Batman and Robin. You know, I know, I, know, I, I, I said that. But I don't know how right I am. About that wasn't wasn't batman and robin um 97 i think blade might have come out between them but don't quote me i am these hiccups are pissing me off want to redo that part no i'm okay it's part of the episode it's part of the episode now <laughs> Fuck it. okay well, maybe maybe having hiccups is your mutation and you're you're an x-man now. oh my god my powers are revealing themselves hold on let me try to get rid of them right now ah there we go all right they're gone <laughs> Oh, no, they're not. Why do hiccups happen? You ever wonder that? I, I can't say I have, honestly. No, I, don't, I don't think about it that much. I'm looking it up right now. Hiccups are caused by involuntary contractions of your diaphragm. Also, that separate from your abdomen is an important role in breathing. This involuntary contraction causes your vocal cords to close up very briefly, which produces a charismatic sound. Interesting. X-Man. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> shit. Shit. Nothing's working. I need to be scared. X-Men Origins Wolverine! Ah! <laughs> Fuck, it didn't work. <laughs> Am I good? Is it over? Nope. This movie was great. I watched it with a bunch of friends, and we all made fun of it. And um, Patrick Stewart plays a bald guy in a wheelchair, and he's the best performance in the whole movie because he's the only one that's actually trying. I think, I think Hugh Jackman tries. Yeah, I need to watch the rest of them. <laughs> I think he gets better, but I'd say he puts out a good performance here. Are these hiccups just gonna stay or something? Like uh, I don't do I... know if I should keep. I don't know if I should keep talking or not. I, no, I keep keep. No, you could keep talking. It's it's only on my end. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I think Hugh Jackman's fine in this movie. I think he's 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 at his weakest, obviously, because this is his first appearance ever as Wolverine. But I think it's good. I don't think it's it's as iconic as Robert Downey Jr.'s first performance as Tony Stark. But he definitely uh, does get better, and he definitely like like becomes the face of the character later. It it's nice to see him look all all young and stuff in this movie though, because uh, seeing Hugh Jackman now, and especially seeing Hugh Jackman in Logan, where he's he's aged up, uh, it was nice to to go back to him as little little baby boy. Patrick Stewart said this movie and he's great. Uh, Ian McKellen is Magneto, the villain, and he's great. These are two fantastic actors who stay for the entire franchise for the most part, and they're great. I uh, I watched a review of this movie, and he he said that Wolverine is too tall in this movie, and that's why he doesn't like him. Uh, Wolverine is too tall, but to not like him because he's too tall is stupid. <laughs> Listen, I know everyone wants a short Canadian man to play Wolverine, but if you ignore the fact that Hugh Jackman is a colossus, he's a great Wolverine. Can I please stop hiccuping? Please. Can I please stop? <laughs> the thing that I didn't like about this movie, though, is, like, half of the people in this movie just, like, 
stand there because there's not a lot of opportunity for these performances to shine for these performances to shine <laughs> fuck <laughs> it's part of the episode now i don't care i don't care this ending scuffed because this movie's scuffed it's the fox cult yeah they, they cursed us they cursed they cursed me <laughs> hey, Chris, yeah, I mean, I'm cursed by being here. Right? <laughs> this is pre-Spider-Man one, and I think like because th this movie has the same kind of cheesy comic bookiness that Spider-Man one has, where like it hasn't necessarily aged well, but its age is kind of on purpose. And like Sam Raimi actually talked about that recently in an interview, where like he 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 didn't want to make a timeless movie; he wanted it to feel like Peter Parker from 2003 was on the screen. And that's why a lot of that cheesiness is like like is the way it is. It's intentional, and I think X Men kind of has that same vibe to it. I just think Spider Man One does it better. Like it's it do, it does being a cheesy comic book adaptation better. And that's all I have. That's all I have to say on X Men, buddy. So like I have <laughs> like, I have so much to to say, but I can't fucking. <laughs> Yeah, it's like right up. Like I have nothing left, bud. So you're gonna have to power through with these hiccups. I have. Okay, I'm gonna try powering through it. Okay, Halle Berry's in this movie. I forgot she was in the movie. <laughs> like two nights hey, after. Same I actually. No, I forgot she was in the movie when we saw her. I'm like, oh, that's. And then you pointed it out. You're like, oh, that's Halle Berry. Storm has. I I counted them. Storm has three lines. Storm has three lines, or well, more like three scenes where she speaks. Not three lines. She has three scenes where she speaks. Speaks. She's she just she's just lightning. She's Pikachu in this movie. Like she just she exists. To, to, you know. Shock. You know what happens when a when you light a toad on fire? Same thing that happens to everything else. That's such a stupid line. Where does where does that come from? That's a kind of badass when you consider it's from two thousand, right? Uh, I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> It's two thousand. It's badass for two thousands era cringe comments. All right, I, there's a there's way more I want to say. Like I want to talk about the villains and stuff, but I think I need to wrap this up because I, I can't speak anymore. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so Pat, Pat, I need to <laughs> recommend you a movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the worst ending ever. It's okay. Maybe maybe there will be a blooper at the end. <laughs> maybe. No, I'll save it. <laughs> Well, it has to be. It has to be in the episode. I'm talking about X Men. <laughs> Fuck. No, no, no. Like the blooper from like the the audio test. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> shit. Fuck. What the? <laughs> Those two. Like, we were shit and ready. Now that you recommend me that movie, so you can wrap this. up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. We need to wrap this up. All right. So Pat, I need to recommend you a movie now. You know how some of my recommendations, I was like, Pat, how have you not seen this at all? You know, this movie, I think it's on your watch list by mistake. But if it isn't, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. Pat, you like, uh, you like sci-fi movies, right? I, I do. Mm. Do you like, do you like Oscar sweeps? Yes. Oh, let me give you a movie that I think won 13 Oscars, I think. Uh, this is a huge meme in the Oscar community. Uh, that I'm talking about... Mad Max Fury Road. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. What? <laughs> How? Uh, th this and and uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Blade Runner twenty forty nine are movies I've always wanted to see, and I have not sat down and watched them yet. Yeah, I've not seen Fury Road. That what? Okay, well, it is not on here by accident. <laughs> well, Pat, uh, I am making you watch Mad Max Fury Road. I am excited. Uh, I'm a little bit afraid that I'm wasting a banger here. Because this might this movie might be too much of a banger, but the, we we could do an episode about it later yeah. on. Yeah, hey, we did they did that for La La Land, right? So maybe we'll turn it back around and. Uh... And this this movie is what in my in my honest opinion the only good Tom Hardy movie. <laughs> I think Venom is pretty. Good. Wait, I forgot Tom Hardy is in Dunkirk and Inception. Those movies are yeah, good and he's too. in and he's in the Revenant and he's in. Uh, I I actually I have I have a, I have hot takes about the Revenant. <laughs> Interesting. You can talk about it when you're not dying. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm dying anymore. Actually, I think I'm good. He's in No <laughs> Way Home. I said what I said. Yeah, he's in Marie Antoinette. I said you what I said. You haven't seen it. You haven't seen oh, it. Well, I don't. I don't know what Marie Antoinette is. <laughs> he's in that Al Capone fucking biopic. <laughs> 
What? That I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. What Al Capone biopic? What's it called? It's called Capone. <laughs> I don't even see it. I'm on letter. Oh my god, I found it. Oh, apparently it sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it. Just, I'm looking at Google right now. <laughs> he's in. He's in Venom. Let there be carnage. How can you say? All Bad right, you just, you're just you're just naming every Tom Hardy movie. <laughs> he's in a rock and roll. But like you, you know how uh, we keep saying how in every Tom Hardy movie they make him look like shit. He's the lead in this movie. He still looks like shit. <laughs> like this, it's a post, it's a post apocalypse in this movie. Like it, he looks like shit. <laughs> like, it looks like shit because everyone looks like shit, right? So but yeah, everyone in this movie looks like shit. But like this movie itself doesn't look like shit. Directed by George Miller, who directed all the other Mad Max movies, but he also directed Babe and Happy Feet. So you know. <laughs> There's a new Mad Max movie that's be that's in in production, but I'm preparing you for the new one. Okay, you have to watch Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> I will. And with that being said, my hiccups are gone because I stopped talking about X Men. It really was the Fox Cult. X Men kind of mid. There we go. I said what I wanted and needed to say. <laughs> if you want to hear more about my opinions on X Men, I guess. Wait until Pat recommends me X2. <laughs> X2. X2 is better. So I know. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Make sure to check out the socials and the rest of the episodes, which you could find on the link tree, linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel. And you don't want to miss the next episode because we're going to be talking about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And Pat's just going to talk about... Sam Raimi, like not even the movie. There's just Sam Raimi. He's gonna talk about Evil Dead. You guys know that I like the Spider-Man trilogy by Sam Raimi. Evil Dead Two is in his top fifty best movies list. Yeah, but I might be editing that movie list like like today because my some 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 opinions need to be elaborated on and some changes that some need to be changed. Yeah, actually, I I recently just made a top 50 list for my own uh if you want to see any of our top 50 lists our letterbox accounts are also in the in the link tree see look at that segue that was perfect you did it this episode is way longer than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> yeah legit i think we've been going for like almost an hour and a half right it, like, it's been an hour and 34 yeah so yeah it's gonna be long damn it's because it's because we went on that tangent about how movies should be these days <laughs> that was a good tangent Maybe we could do a, a bonus episode just on that, that we, we could elaborate further. Who knows? We'll Ooh, see. who knows? Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see all of you in a theater near you. Bye. Goodbye. We have a lot to talk about in Hot Off the Presses, which is good because it'll be good for good, it'll make for good filler. <laughs> Did we talk? Did we? Did we? We didn't record an episode when the Thor trailer dropped, did we? Oh yeah, that, I guess that's news. You got to put that. Are you recording again? Or yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I think I think that's an, enough stuff for hot off the presses. Because like the CinemaCon stuff, I'm gonna we'll probably just elaborate on as a conversation. So you know what? You know what's weird? Weirding me out about that '90s show. What that '70s show. The last episode took place New Year's Day, nineteen seventy nine, and the show right. the show ended as soon as it became nineteen eighty, and that's how it ends. But then that nineties show, we skipped a decade. <laughs> the eighties are irrelevant. They they never happened. Honestly, I'd rather a show about the eighties. I think they they did they did seventies. I mean, they're doing nineties because that eighty. Well, first of all, the eighty show already exists. Yeah, and also like an original idea. Let's let's do a show about the kids of the characters from the original series. And you want it, you want to make them old enough to be like the original cast age. So you have to skip a decade or so. If the show doesn't start and fucking Eric and if Eric and Donna are split up at the beginning of the show, I'm not watching it. Okay, that's just straight up. I'm not gonna watch. I feel it. like I feel like that's either gonna be the case or they're. Don't, like they, they won't. They were not, we're not going to see them physically be together. Like regardless, I feel like everybody returning aside from Kit and Ready, a uh, Kit, Kitty and Kit Ready, and Ready. <laughs> Kit, Kit and Ready, Kit and Kitty Ready, and Red. Kitty and Red, Kitty and Red, Kitty and Red. I feel like they're only uh, like they're the only ones we're going to see as like regular cast members. I think like the the old the old cast is just going to be in there 
Oh, oh, it's like, it's like, it's, 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 it's a different cast. Also, yeah. it's like how I met your fucking father. Yeah, it's legit just going to be like kids and Reggie. Oh, fuck, it did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty and Red. <laughs> I did it again. Kids and Reddy. In the episode, I'm going to call them Kit and Reddy. You could like put this in as a blooper if you want. I don't fucking care. But like, um, I feel like Red and Kitty are the only ones who are going to be in the show regularly. And it's going to be a whole new cast. Like, it's about the kids, right? It's not about the old characters. Yeah.